We've done comparisons of two independent population means. Now we're going to look at proportions. So these kind of problems, where what we're comparing is the percent of two different groups that meet that same criteria. For example, um, we have two candidates um, or more than two candidates even running for an office. We want to look at the top two and compare what percent of people voted for those candidates. Um, another example is we're looking at statistics over multiple years and we're trying to see if a percentage is increasing, decreasing, or remaining the same. So you can do um, margin of error and confidence intervals, but we are going to focus on hypothesis tests. So here we have um, two population proportions are different or equal. Population one proportion is below population two or reverse. Population one is above population two. And just like in the last section, you'd want to think of this as subtracting that P2 over and seeing if it's less than zero or greater than zero for your left and right tail tests. When we get down to the bottom, we'll use a Z test. We'll make our decision and convert that back into a conclusion. So just looking at two problems from the homework, it's the last two, numbers five and six in this assignment, um, we've got a couple of problems. And honestly, the first one isn't a great problem. I haven't really been able to find any better options or write better options for now. So we'll just use this. But I would say um, what we have here already is a population if we're looking at all of the armed robberies that year. So let's just pretend like these are simple random samples of robberies so that we can really um, use, meet the requirements of these tests. And when we go to Staplet, we're going to go to one categorical variable, multiple groups here. We have our groups, one and two. So in this situation, it's 2010 and 2011 for our groups. Categories are going to be successes and failures. So in this problem, what we're calling a success or the, the outcome that we're concerned about is going to be armed robberies. And then the other category outcome is non-armed robberies or not armed robberies. You can just put success and fail if you want to simplify that way down. So in 2010, the number of armed robberies was 7,622. And in 2011, that increased or decreased to 7,439. Then we need to know how many were not armed robberies of all of those, um, all of those robberies, how many were not armed, um, or no, all, of all those violent crimes, rather, how many were not armed robberies. So what you need to do is take the total number of violent crimes minus the number of armed robberies. I've done that for both groups over here in Desmos. So these are the number of violent crimes that are not armed robberies for 2010. And then here, number of violent crimes that are not armed robberies for 2011. So these now um, in each column should add up to that total number. So we can see that armed robberies are a small percentage um, of those groups. Um, and they do um, have very close percentages. Um, like I said, these are populations. So we can see that it's a bigger proportion in 20. 11 and 2010, but let's just pretend like these are samples of a much bigger count. And we can even argue that this is just a sample of United States population, although it's not a simple random sample because it's all in Texas. Um, so what we're going to do is go all the way down to perform inference and do a one sample Z test for the difference between those population proportions. We're going to figure out if it's a left, right, or two tailed test. This one just says different. So we have a two-tailed test, and we're going to use armed robberies as our success there. So here we have a Z of negative 3.33, so that's three and a third standard deviations to the left. That means population one is significantly below population two, um, and a very small p-value. So just kind of uh, zooming down here, we've got our Z and our p-value. Um, I have had some issues with this p-value. Um, if you need to add decimal places, you can. Um, but you may just find that it's a very small proportion there. Um, what you can do is indicate um, that this is less than 0 0.001. 
by putting in that p-value and if you submit that um, you you should um, get that correct even though it is off a little bit um, just try that and, and just definitely email me if you have any issues with that part of the process um, because we're just um, not aligning our technology perfectly here so we would have a very small p-value in this one we would reject the null hypothesis and we would have sufficient evidence to support that those are different one more example here this one is also um, going to be uh, this one categorical multiple groups we are not going to enter raw data for any of these problems because they've already been summarized um, in this one we have gender differences so we're looking at groups of boys and girls uh, or you could say young men and young women um, for um, their texting habits um, so I would start by just filling out these uh, group names like we have here we have boys and girls um, and these are middle school so we have um, eventually what we want to do is compare um, and it says girls are sexing less than boys so actually since it's stating girls first I think I want to actually flip this around so that it uh, lines up better okay so we're gonna eventually have girls less than boys for our hypothesis and then um, we really are just breaking it down to are they sexting or not and so now we need to break this down we're going to start with number of girls in this sample who are sexting that's 156 out of 2169 so I'll just start with the 156 and now the number of boys is 183 and we need the frequencies again to add up to the total so I'm gonna go back over here and take my total for each minus my success rate so 2169 minus 156 and then in this other group I have 183 out of um, 2231 so 2231 minus 183 So 2013 and 2048 are my other numbers. And again, I can look and compare those percentages. These are different percentages um, for those groups. And all the way down at the bottom, we'll do our one sample Z test. In this problem, it says girls is less than boys. Um, at a 0.01 level of significance. So that's a left tail test. P1 minus P2 would be a negative or less than zero. Perform our inference. We get a Z test statistic 1.25 or 26 standard deviations to the left of the mean. It's a pretty high p-value and that will be more than our 0.01. So let's just double check that. Here's our Z. Here's our p-value. We're going to fail to reject and not have sufficient evidence for that conclusion.